Are you ready to hear God's Word taught to you this morning? There's a brand new series I'm getting started with this morning, and I've called it The Voice. I don't know, have you ever watched The Voice on television? Yeah, I, I've, I've watched it on occasion. I haven't watched it a lot. I have watched it on occasion. It's a popular talent show, and it's called The Voice because it's a competition of singers uh, that are selected to serve or to sing or participate on a celebrity singer's team, and they're actually coached by that celebrity singer, and they're picked only by hearing their voice. And so they, the, 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 the stars or the celebrities sit with their back turned to the uh, uh, person who is auditioning to be selected, and they cannot see them, they cannot do anything with them except hear their voice. And that way they aren't swayed by what they look like or, or perhaps how they're dressed or anything else. Just simply their talent and their voice. And they pick these people and they select them to their team and then they have these competitions and people are voted off and all sorts of things until finally one person comes through and, and, and they're the winner. And a part of the entertainment factor when you watch this is that as the celebrities' backs are turned to those who are competing, oftentimes the cameras show them they're looking at each other and they're wondering should they or should they not turn around uh, in order to see this person because they're working through, because they only have so many team members they can pick, and they're working through this because they're wondering, is this, is this the voice? Is this the voice that will win the competition? Is this the voice that will break through and become the next star? Is this the voice that they can coach and mentor and help become uh, this celebrity much like they are? And as I began to think about that, I, I think sometimes you and I are a lot like those celebrities who sit in our seats like we are this morning. And when it comes to hearing God, we wonder, should I turn around and is that the voice? Is that the voice of the Lord? Is that the voice of the Lord that's going to help me break through? Is that the voice of the Lord that's going to help uh, speak to me in where I'm at this moment? Is that the voice of the Lord that's going to help take me from where I'm at and get me to this promise or this purpose that I feel like he has for my life? And oftentimes, I believe the voice of the Lord is coming to us, but we're a little bit tentative to hit that button and turn us around so that we can see the face of God and ultimately say yes. So I'm going to help fix that in these next weeks. Um, I'm not an expert in this area, but I have a little experience. I always figure an expert is someone that has maybe a step or two more experience than the next person. So uh, I, I may have a step or two on you, maybe not much, but a little experience in this area. And I believe that there are some things that you can do to help hear the voice of God more clearly in your life. Let me just ask a question to get some interaction here. How many of you have ever had a moment that you would have liked to have heard the voice of God? If I could have just heard the voice of God. Really? Well, that's good. There's about half of you. I don't know about you, but there are moments that I, I have said, Lord, it really helped me here if I could hear your voice. It really helped me here if you could speak into this thing, if I had some direction, if you could tell me what's going on, if you could give me a little guidance here. So uh, you may not realize you need that, but maybe perhaps when we're done, you'll desire that even more. Because in these next weeks, I'm going to talk about things such as, well, how do I hear God's voice? I mean, how do I know it's God? What if I'm confused about what I'm hearing? How about this one? Is this God or is this me? I mean, how do I know this isn't the pizza I had, you know, at Baroni's last night? Is this God or is this me? What voices are forbidden? You know, they're forbidden voices. There are a lot of things that will speak to you, but not all of them are God. How do, I, how do I implement? Because you see, it's not that we're just hearers of the word, but we are doers of what we hear. And some of you, you know, some of you... Uh, you hear from God uh, through dreams and things, and, and so I, I thought maybe we talk about symbolisms and numbers and timing and interpreting and how, how, is, how is God speaking and what does that mean and how do I, how do I interpret all of these things? The, the Holy Spirit 
this week was very deliberate with me about sharing and teaching some of these things and I'll tell you why we are about ready to go into some very bumpy days here in America now you can ignore what I'm saying to you and you'll do it to your own peril there are some very bumpy days that are going to happen in America you see this is this is it's like I'm in an alternate universe I mean we have the Russian president saying we ought to help persecuted Christians in Africa and we have the American president telling us that we ought to keep religion out of the public square we are in an alternate universe folks and so we're gonna head into some bumpy days and I don't want that statement to cause great consternation or anxiety or worry because here's the reason if you become adept and skilled at hearing clearly the voice you will have a distinct advantage can I suggest to you that you'll have a divine advantage in navigating the days ahead I just want to remind you of just simple Bible stories there was a guy by the name of Noah in the scripture who heard from God concerning a storm that was going to come across the land that God was going to allow to take place. And God told him to build an ark, and he obeyed what God was asking, even though everyone else thought he was foolish. But the moment he responded to God's voice, and he did what God asked, when that day finally came, it held a distinct advantage for him and his family over everyone else in the earth. Jesus said these words. I want you to think about this. Jesus said these words with regards to the end times and his coming. He said this. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. Now, I preached on that verse before, and there's so many incredible things that you could pull out of that verse. Do you know that Noah had seven days warning as to when the rains would come? Many people don't know that. You can go check it out in the Bible. He actually had a week's notice before the rains came. And I honestly believe that no man knoweth the day or the hour when it comes to the coming of the Lord. But, but it doesn't say that you wouldn't know the week. As it was in the days of Noah. Do you understand? Noah heard from God in order to prepare himself and his family for a judgment that was about to be released in the earth. Jesus says as it was in the days of Noah. Hear me now. God will release his voice to his people to prepare them for what's coming in the not too distant future. But if you don't know how to hear the voice, you don't know that you won't be outside the door. Can you understand why I'm looking at you now saying it may not seem that important at the moment, but if the door shut, it'll become incredibly important. So I believe these are the days we need to be doing all that we know to do to make sure that we have ears to hear and be prepared for what is ahead you know truthfully one of the reasons we are in this tabernacle period as a church is because there are some things about ready to shake and we need to be real flexible that's what the lord told me you know there were reasons you know we were paying for those of you that may not know i'll just say it out loud again we were paying almost twelve thousand dollars a month in lease payments <laughs> that was stifling and of course we'd been there 10 years and anyone that knows how leases work there's always increases year after year after year and we did our best to negotiate by the way I have since found out because uh, coincidentally if you believe in coincidences I received an internal email from the Cordish company I do not believe I was supposed to get that email but I got an email and on that email and I'll just synopsize what it said it said a number of uh, uh, wonderful things concerning how we kept the facility and and how how we refurbished it and kept it immaculately so there was much praise that went on in the letter which was a wonderful thing to be praised in an, in an internal email in a multi-billion dollar company but there was a paragraph in there that got my attention I believe it was the Lord that let it be sent to me you know I think the Lord's fingers must have been in cyberspace <laughs> that day when that email got sent to different people and I just got put on it because I don't believe they wanted me to know this it said that basically we didn't fit into their business plan that's what it said I'm telling you with God is my witness we didn't fit into their business plan therefore 
anything and everything that could be done to make us as uncomfortable as possible in being there would be implemented in order to simply say, it's time for you to go on. And that is why you'd heard me through the years tell you that it was challenging to get leaks taken care of and to get things taken care of. It's because ultimately they didn't want a church being there. You see, that's really the spirit of the world. The world doesn't want the church, but when the church gets taken out of this place, they're going to find out we were a lot more important than they probably gave us credit for. <laughs> And that day's coming, and we need to be prepared. But aside from all of those external factors, because sometimes, you know, God will harden the heart of a Pharaoh in order to get his people moving the direction he wants to get them moving. But besides all of that, I believe that I did hear the voice of the Lord saying to me as, as a pastor, you know, you need, to, you need to hang on to things loosely and be real flexible because there's coming some bumpy days in America. Don't let that, don't let that cause you any worry. Scripture says he's never seen the righteous begging for bread. You stay faithful with God, and he will come and take care of you in the midst of calamity. Listen, you can get thrown into fiery furnaces, and he'll show up and stand with you. You can get thrown into lion's den, and angels will show up and shut the mouths of lions. It doesn't matter where you may find yourself. God can come, and he can keep you and help you in that location. Do you believe that? But a lot of that determines on whether or not we're going to hear the voice of God. So, as we get started this morning, I want to begin with the message this morning, the need to hear His voice. And if you have your Bibles, and I hope you bring your Bibles or your technology, but we do put it on the screen overhead, in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 4, I want to read to you the first four verses of Jesus' new season. Jesus is going into a new season, and He's going through a wilderness time period, and as he's going through this time period, the enemy shows up seeking to get him detoured. And this is what takes place as he's beginning this time period. It says in Matthew 4, verse 1, it says, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. There it is. God sometimes will lead you into wildernesses. Jesus was led into a wilderness. And he was there to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights... Afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered, meaning Jesus, and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And it's that last verse. You cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The need to hear his voice. Now, I read to you out of this text the beginning of this season, this new season for Jesus. There had been 30 years of silence with regards to... To Jesus we don't know really much about what took place we know that he probably worked and he was trained and and we don't have a lot of details in that regard but the time and the hour had come for Jesus to step forward and to begin what would be the last three years of his earthly ministry and as he steps into this new season you got to remember he'd been baptized by John the voice of the Lord came from the clouds the father himself said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then what does God do after he says, I love you and I'm pleased with you? What does God do with him? He sends him to a wilderness. Aren't you glad God's your friend? But you see, God, God's wildernesses are preparation zones. There are things that are happening. And even Jesus, to fulfill all righteousness, enters into these things. And so... So this new season comes, and every new season has a feature. Some fresh word from the Lord usually comes in a new season. But as is often the case, the enemy tries to wiggle his way in there to make sure that you stay powerless, that you stay confused, and you stay out of the will of God. Hear me, the devil's sole purpose, once you become a Christian, is to keep you out of God's promise and abundancy for your life. He wants to do everything he can to make you as a believer miserable. And I hope you know he's successful in so many people's lives. So he tries to get Jesus to get detoured, to get his focus 
on his circumstance. Now hear me, this is going to be very important for you. Listen. Isn't that what the enemy always wants you to do? He wants to get your eyes on your circumstance. He tried to get Jesus to focus in on the fact that he's hungry and he needs something to eat. That was his circumstance. If I can just keep their eyes on their circumstance, then they can't hear from God. That happens to all of our lives. You go through a difficult season. You go through some trauma. You go through a challenge in your life. You're transitioning. God can even be doing things in your life, but things are tumultuous. There's some upheaval. There may be, there may be persecution, pressure, fights, whatever the case may be. The enemy will swoop in and he will try to get your focus on your circumstance so he can keep your ears away from the voice. But Jesus responds to all of this, and he quotes out of Deuteronomy a verse, and he says that the biggest crisis, this is what Jesus says, the biggest crisis here is not that I don't have anything to eat. The biggest crisis here is that God has not spoken yet, and we need to hear his voice. And that's really where most of us are at and what we need to hear. Because you see, our real problem is not our lack of resource. That's what people think. If I just had more money, my problems would be solved. If I just had a new marriage, my problem would be solved. If I just could get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, my problem would be solved. If I could get a new job, my problem would be solved. Listen, that's not your problem. All your problems would be solved if you would just hear his voice. If only you could hear his voice. How many times is our focus diverted from hearing his voice to listening to the circumstances we're facing? But Jesus reminds us, he says, that our real need is not money, it is not natural resource, but to hear the voice of God. One word from God will change everything. Sure it will. Now some of you know that, and I suspect all of you would agree with that in theory. If I were to say, let's take a vote, and how many of you in here believe, well, let's just take a vote. How about that? How many of you would believe uh, this morning that one word from God will change everything? I mean, it could change everything. Well, good. Now we're getting almost un unanimity right here. All right. Now, theoretically, we're there. <laughs> but what happens? You know, you're needing guidance and direction and wisdom and understanding, or you need your joy back or your peace back or your hope back or a hundred different items that we feel like we need. Hear me now. Our, our problem is we aren't hearing and we don't know how to hear. In fact, most people say they believe God can speak, but they function and live like a deist. And if you don't know what a deist is, a deist is somebody who believes that God may get things started, but then he's sort of like the watchmaker. He gets the watch rolling, but then he walks away and the watch just sort of ticks on its own. Most people, that's how they function as deists. They don't function as Christians. They're deists. They think maybe God got them saved. Maybe God got them started, but basically God has left them on their own devices. Listen, that's not scripture. And we're going to tackle all of these questions in the upcoming weeks because I'm telling you, this is the hour. It's the hour as it was in the days of Noah that we're going to have to hear like Noah heard in order that we might be prepared. Because the Bible says things like, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. So obviously God's talking. The Bible says today if you will hear his voice. Jesus said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. All through the Old Testament, you'll hear the phrase, if you will carefully listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. There's one great verse in Deuteronomy that says that the blessing will overtake you if you heed the voice of the Lord thy God. I don't know about you, I want to hear God's voice. I would love, I would love to be overtaken in blessing. I mean, the, the Bible says that the blessing will come upon you and it will overtake you. Wouldn't you like not only to receive it and for a blessing to come upon you, but for you just to be blessed so much that you go, I don't even know what to do with all of this. I've been blessed beyond measure and it's overtaken me. That, that is a possibility in the kingdom of God, but the key is that you and I have to hear his voice and hear what he's saying. So what do I need to do to hear from God and what does that mean practically all right let's get started the short answer is 
as to why do I need to hear from God and what does that mean practically? The short answer is because none of us are as smart as we think we are. See, the reason when I ask about the word of the Lord, and I know some people just don't lift their hands because you just, you know, oh yeah, I know you're talking rhetorically, Pastor. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I, so I, I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm just saying, for a lot of us, the reason we don't think hearing from God is important is because we really think we're smarter than him, secretly. We don't need to hear from him because I got it. I got it, God. You can, you can, you can mess with them. They, they need you. They need a crutch. They need some help. I've got it. I've got it. Let me just say this, and it's not to demean anyone. I'm just saying it out loud for all of us, myself included. I am in this group. None of us are as smart as we think we are. Every human being eventually will need help beyond themselves. And your reluctance to seek God and his guidance through a number of ways, which I'm going to get to here in just a moment, is an indicator of what God calls being stiff-necked. Now hear me, if you don't want to hear from God on something and you just say, I don't want to hear from God on this, then that's what Israel did with the Lord and, is, and, and God called Israel at that moment stiff-necked. And you don't want to be stiff-necked with God because he will break your neck. <laughs> hear me when I tell you this, God, God is the only one that can see around the corner. He's the only one that knows the end from the beginning. He's the only person that can see the outcome of whatever situation you are facing is. However, beyond that, it, it's, critically, it's incredibly practical. I'm going to share with you just, just some stories just like this. And some of them you've heard, but I just want to share them real quickly because I want you to get a practical handle on why you need to hear from God. For instance, let's just take something that many of us face, parenting. Parenting. Now, I can tell you on a couple different occasions. I remember one distinctly. When my oldest son was in his early years in high school, and he was upstairs, and it was a normal day at our house, and we're downstairs, my wife and I, and we're just kind of, I don't know, watching TV or doing what we're doing, just a normal day. And all of a sudden, she looks at me, just looks at me and says, I need to find Clayton. I said, what, 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 you know? And she goes, something's not right. I need to go find Clayton. And she marched herself upstairs, walked right into his bedroom, which by the way, our, our bedroom doors are not allowed to be locked in, in my house. When you can pay for your room, you, you can lock your room. If you can't pay for it, it's still my room. That's how we worked it in my house. And she walked in his room, and he was on the phone call, and I won't go into the details, but he was, he was planning something that I guarantee you he ought not have been planning. Now let me just tell you, is that not a divine advantage in parenting to have the Lord speak to you about these things? I mean, to be able to know something's not right here. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm telling all my children, and I won't, I won't embarrass them in any way, shape, or form, but, but you know, Kaylin's sitting here in the front row, and she knows there, there was a day that, that we, were, uh, we were at a restaurant, and the Lord spoke to me. And we had a quick conversation on something right there. It was so out of the ordinary that I would... I would do and speak this to Kaylin, and that instant, that instant, the Lord unveiled something, and it was a number of years ago now. It wasn't like, you know, last week or anything. It was a number of years ago, but that, that just opened something up that we were able to circumvent in our children's lives in order to keep them from destruction. I'd say that's pretty practical, wouldn't you? Let me tell you, some of you parents, you've you got to hear God's voice because I guarantee you, he might have something to say about little Johnny and Susie. I mean, that's just a practical moment. I mean, God could speak to you and literally keep them from destroying themselves. I knew a guy years ago, a businessman. His name was Richard. He came in and told me about this, that, that he was working, trying to work on a plan uh, that he had about recovering a sewage water and recovering... A paint thinner actually that had been used uh, and mixed with paint and you know you thin paint and then your thinner is no good you just throw it away because it's it's full of paint and and he had some ideas about how to recover these things and uh, he, he, he couldn't press through on it and one night he said that he had a dream and God showed him it was like it was like getting the flux capacitor you know like in back to the future he had this dream that God gave him the flux capacitor 
And he woke up from that dream and he sketched it out on a piece of paper and he went into his garage and he's able to do something. And I don't get this stuff because I'm not a scientist, but he was able to do something in order to implement it in some other ideas that he had. And right now, listen to this, he's selling this to municipalities in order to, to take their sewage and turn it into 99.9% pure drinking water. And he's able to sell it to chemical companies that will recover like the thinner or the methyl ethyl ketone out of it in order that they can use it again and save them money from buying barrels of, of these, these chemicals again. He's a millionaire. God's voice spoke to him. I know what some of us say. Some of us would say, well, I don't know that God would ever do that with me. Listen, if I could have taken you to Richard's home and showed you where he lived and how he did this in his garage, you wouldn't have thought he could do it either. But I'm telling you, God's voice can speak and it can give you the divine advantage. My wife, I mean, I remember when we were in college. I didn't know my wife. I know she sang in a little singing group. But I was ministering in chapel one day. <laughs> She was sitting back in the mezzanine level way in the back, and it just happened to be one of those days I was speaking. I'll never forget. She said something clicked in her. She turned to her girlfriend that was sitting there, and she said, I'm going to marry him. <laughs> and her girlfriend said, he doesn't even know you. <laughs> and Tracy said, he will. <laughs> and it stuck for 31 plus years. I think, I think it'd be good to hear from God, wouldn't you, in big decisions? How many times in your life have you been standing there and all of a sudden a person came to mind? And then maybe a phone rang and that person was on the phone. How many times have you felt somehow nudged to avoid something on a certain day or to avoid a particular traffic route? And then to find out later that there was some accident or some closure that took place there. How many times have you fa perhaps felt uneasy about something that is beyond human anxiety? You know, God's speaking to us. And He's speaking to us in far uh, more ways than we can ever imagine. And if we, could, if we could learn not to stumble into obedience, but begin to seize and embrace it, how much more on target would you and I be? How much more of a divine advantage would we walk in? Now, I'll be the first one to admit that I've not always been 100% in hearing or speaking. I don't know that anyone could say they're 100%. But my lack of precision does not negate the fact that God can and does speak to us today. So we're going to get started because I just, we're going we're to take our time and I want to get you positioned to hear the voice of God. Because for some of you, you're going to hear things and you may need to get wisdom and counsel and we'll talk about that you just, you just can't go off half cocked in, sometimes in your own direction. That sometimes you got to get wisdom and counsel and these things are uh, within God's confirmation process. But we will get there. But I need to begin to position you so that you can begin to be prepared to hear how God might speak to you, all right? And there are eight ways I have sort of synopsized this into my own little grouping. Uh, surely there could be more, but I think I've synopsized about all of them into these eight groupings or ways that God tries to speak to his people. And you may want to write these down because some of these ways I found this to be true, that once I figure out how God predominantly speaks to me then that's usually the way it comes to me you know God's not trying to trip us up once I figure out how it is that God relates to me and speaks to me then uh, I, I have my ears open more in that particular area but here are eight ways that God could potentially speak to any of us number one obviously it's the primary way it's scripture scripture is the primary source of how God speaks. That's why you hear pastors and people harping on you. Are you reading the Word? Are you studying the Word? Are you, are you getting its precepts? Not only will that be important to hear His voice come from the Scripture, but when you hear His voice in more subjective ways, you need the Scripture by which to figure out at times, was that God, me, or the devil? So you still need to understand the Scripture. So the Scripture is very, very important. 
We have to obviously learn how to interpret it and to apply it, but it's the standard. In fact, everything you will hear any other way is bound to what the Scripture says. God's voice will always agree with what He inspired in the Scripture. So that's going to be a filter. And I'm telling you, in the world we're living in, there are many voices that are coming at us that are trying to confuse you and to detour you. And if you have a handle on the Bible and the Scripture, it is a great advantage to be able to filter all these voices being thrown at you as to whether this is true or not, because that's how you're going to begin to evaluate things. That's why you should read your Bible, believe that God will speak to you through it, and it means that everyone here, listen to me, everyone here has access to God's voice. If no other way, you have access through the Scripture. That's number one. Number two, I call it impression. There are times I think in everybody's life, sometimes it happens through prayer, when you're praying. Sometimes you may not even be praying. All of a sudden this thought, this, it's, a, it's a profound or important thought comes to you. Now, Let's just deal with a little understanding of how we're built. When you invited Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit, it says, came inside of you. His Spirit came inside of your spirit to where now He dwells inside of you. If you want to know where God is today, He's here in all of us. And of course, He's here and, and He surrounds us. He's, he's everywhere, but, but he's, he's inside of us guiding and leading and directing but it's while he's inside of us that the lord himself will begin to give us impressions or thoughts now it would be great and, and i'm not going to have time in this series if we talked about the inner man but but there are ways that you can begin to to catch those moments those nudges that come to us most people have a moment in their life experience when they've had some thought and then they'll say to themselves where did that thought come from Anybody else but me? I've had that. Where did that thought come from? That's an odd thought. Many times that's the nudging of the Holy Spirit trying to speak to us about something. And again, I mentioned to you, it's what happens to parents, I believe, on numerous occasions when it comes to their children. I also believe that ladies, are, because they're just relationally wired a little bit better, I think, than most men. That's, that's not everyone, but... but generally they are I, I, I believe that for them they can get those nudges their radars are acutely better I'll just put it that way uh, and, and God will nudge them you know maybe to call or to run down the kids that 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 can be God that can be the Holy Spirit speaking to you all right those those impressions number three dreams or visions dreams or visions now I've already decided that I'm going to take at least one full message on this area because it is, it, is, it is prevalent that God will speak to us in our dream life. If, this, if you've never heard a message on dreams, it's really important. The reason God speaks to people through dreams is because when we sleep, our natural defenses are down. So he can get through to us oftentimes unencumbered. That's why he'll speak to people through dreams. Because we don't have all of our scud missiles up and our natural mind working so hard like we are when we're awake. When we're asleep, he has opportunities to come in. Now, I also understand the mind enough that, that the, the mind cleanses dendrites and, and, and God, you know, we all had weird dreams and we got up in the morning and said, boy, wasn't that a weird one? And, 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 and we'll get into all of this as to when it's just like a commercial that went on in your brain and just ignore it or when it may be a God dream. But let me just tell you this. When I was first saved, I, I couldn't have been saved more than three months. And I remember one night, clearly to this day, going to bed, only three months of salvation under my belt, and only that same 90 days with a little bit of Bible study under my belt. But I went to bed one night, and I had the most profound dream that I've ever had. And it was a picture, and I was, I was preaching in, in front of a great crowd of people. And there were a lot of interesting details to it, but the most interesting detail was that a friend of mine, who was also a Christian, was in the dream as well, and he too was preaching. And I remember waking up, and that thing was seared into my psyche. In fact, if I had the time, I could tell you all these wonderful details. That wouldn't mean as much to you as it does to me, obviously. But I, I remember getting up and saying, wow, that's weird. And then I went on. It just happened to be Sunday, and uh, it was time to go to church. So I went to church that morning, and my friend who had gone to college at another Christian college across the nation, 
His sister still went, we still went to the same church, and so I saw his sister. And I came up to his sister that morning, and before I could get it out of my mouth, she looked at me and she said, hey, Kevin, I wanted to catch up with you today because I had the wildest dream last night. And she began to tell me with detail and precision the same dream that I had had that night. And I looked at her and I said, you know, this is really weird. Now, understand, I only got three months under my belt. This, is, this, is, this would be weird if you had 30 years under your belt. And I said, well, I don't, I don't understand. What do you think? And she goes, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I want to call my, my brother, but I, I know he's busy. And maybe, uh, maybe it has something to do with the both of you. I guess I'd pray about it or something. She said that. So after church was over, I got home, picked up the phone, and I called my friend, again, miles away at another college. I called him, and I finally got him on the phone. His name was Jim. I said, Jim. I said, I just, I just wanted to, to talk to you about something that re- happened really weird to me last night. I didn't even get it all out of my mouth. And on the other end, Jim said, I can't believe you called me on the phone. I was thinking about you, and the reason I was thinking about you is because I had the wildest dream last night, Kevin. I said, have you talked to your sister? He said, I would talked to my sister. And he began to tell me the same exact dream that we all had had. I said, well, Jim, I don't know much about this stuff. What do you think? And he said, I believe God may be calling me to the ministry. That's what I feel like he's saying to me. But I guess you'll have to determine what he's saying to you. And I really hadn't considered. But the moment that came out of his mouth, it just ignited in me that inner yes that comes up when God says, that's it. How much more clear must I be with you? Now, I wish I could tell you that happened once a week. Life would have been a lot easier for me. It doesn't happen like that. In fact, I can't tell you with absolute certainty that I've even had in the last 30 years besides that one dream, any other dream. uh, It may have, and maybe I just missed it. Because I don't know that God normally talks to me in that way. I I believe there are other ways that he he begins to speak to me. But I'm telling you, how how many of you know that 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 that's pretty significant and life-altering. And if you want the will of God, isn't that nice to know that God isn't hiding it? See, some of you God's speaking to in these matters. And it's not that you're trying to avoid his voice, although perhaps some are. But for most people, they just aren't getting, is this God's voice? Number four, obviously through preaching and teaching. I know this may be hard for you to believe, But right now, as I'm talking, God may be talking. (laughs) My wife always tells me, she says, I want you to know that if you ever hear the Holy Spirit's voice, it'll sound a lot like mine. (laughs) I said, sweetie, that's too true. I said, you're right, that is too true. But you know, it's interesting, you don't, you don't get this dynamic, but I, I, I almost get this every Sunday, that's, that people, several people will come up to me, and they won't even have talked to one another, and they'll just say things like, you know, Pastor, that message, that was, that was for me. If there was no one else here, that one was for me. And of course, they don't realize that four, five, six other people might say the exact same thing. I've had people come up to me and they'll say, Pastor, what, I mean, what did you, like, did you bug our living room last night? Like, did somehow or another you get, you know, and, and, and you were able to hear our conversation that we were having last night? I mean, it really makes me feel bad because I think they think that really happened. But, you know, this is the amazing thing is that God talks to me and sometimes I don't even know it and then he talks to you. He's talking to some people in this room today and he's telling them this. Listen, this isn't me being tough on anybody, but he's telling you, you are hard of hearing. You need to start listening. In Hebrews, it said that, that, uh, he said that I have much to say, but you cannot hear it. He said it's it's your perception. He says he uses the Greek nothros. He says you're like a rock. I don't want to be called a rock. But God's talking to us. Amazing thing. Number five, kind of fits with this one too. Preaching, or excuse me, people conduits. 
God speaks to us through people conduits. In other words, through wisdom, counsel, even personal prophecy. Last week, we had some prophetic words come forth. That was God speaking, obviously. Sometimes there's wisdom that gets imparted. Sometimes counsel gets imparted. So God opts to use people in these methods as well in order to get his message to us. Now, I honestly believe on a corporate level, God is stirring. In fact, I'm intentionalizing the, the stirring of the spirit of prophecy again. And that's a good thing. And one of the reasons that I, as a pastor, am doing that is because I want to seize the atmosphere that's here. I want, to, I want to prophetically seize the atmosphere at the Crown Plaza at Tanger. I fully intend to seize this ground for kingdom purposes. We don't negotiate. We don't compromise. We exercise dominion. And, and, and prophetically, that happens through the confession and the declaration of his word. And, and so we're doing those things. And of course, um, we have put this into practice. We'll, we'll remind everybody of this as well, that the Holy Spirit has protocol. And, and, and it has protocol so we can have confidence in all of this. And so I fully suspect that there'll be some of you that will have things that God will speak that can be implemented in the body in an appropriate way. But I'm just simply throwing it out there that we should recognize that God will speak to us through people conduits. Um, now, and again, hear what I'm saying. And, and when you're hearing from someone else, that's why you need a filter. You need the scripture. You need confirmation. There are things we'll get into. Because not everything someone says is necessarily the Lord. Even when they say, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes it's thus saith them. Uh, and they just drug God into it. But truthfully, truthfully, we can hear, thus saith the Lord. And there's untold possibilities as God speaks through people and they become conduits through which he can speak into your life and situation in order to bring you to a place of divine advantage. And the prophets are given to us as one of those people conduits through which uh, that can happen, all right? They are a major illustration of how God can speak to us. Number six, how can we hear God's voice? Number six, people say, although it's never happened to me, and the scripture makes place for it, that you can hear direct from God in an audible way, or at least it seems audible. Now, again, I'm just telling you my experiences. I, the scripture tells us that God can speak audibly, so I don't deny that that can happen. I cannot tell you that he has spoke to me audibly. I have had such profound impressions inside of me that you would have thought it was audible, but I'm not sure anyone else would have heard it. But I do believe that God can speak that way. And uh, much like with uh, uh, Samuel, wasn't it Samuel when, when he heard the voice of the Lord and he kept running? And, 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 and he thought it was Eli? And he kept going back over and he figured out it was the voice of the Lord. Have you ever thought you've heard your name called out? And no one had called out your name. Maybe that hasn't happened to you. That has happened to me as well. And oftentimes I'll run and see who's calling my name. And, and I'm to the place now that if I hear that, I know and I'll say, yes, Lord. And I'll find that he'll, he'll drop some things into my spirit at that moment. But I do know that God can speak in these ways. Now, I would put it in the category of being a little bit more rare. I'm not sure this may be a primary way. But I cannot discount the possibility because the scripture makes provision for it. And others have testified to that happening. Now, again, we're going to talk about all the different voices there are in the world. There are all sorts of, of voices and communication that's coming at us, and you're going to have to be able to distinguish between the true voice and the counterfeit voice. And there are ways to do this. So just because you hear a voice, don't automatically assume it must be God. To this day, I have to filter His voice through the Scriptures to make sure I'm hearing the voice of God. All right, number seven providential circumstances or we've already mentioned coincidence this this is one of the ways god might speak to us now i've always i said just think this through i've always said that if a righteous man's steps are ordered then how much of what you may define as coincidence may instead be providence and god's trying to get your attention think about that that there are things happening if you're if, if, if you know the Lord and, and you're wanting his ways and he's ordering your steps and you face coincidences, I will guarantee you that's probably not a coincidence. You see, a coincidence is about chance. Providence is about predestination. It's about God wanting to say something to you at that particular moment. I don't believe, I don't believe I'm lucky or that life is full of chances. I believe God's large and in charge and he's doing things 
in order to help me, to help you as we walk with him. There are things that God is using around us to try to speak to us and to lead us. In fact, Paul would even say in Corinthians, he said, look at the Israelites. He said, God gave us the Israelites so that you might not do what they did. He says, I'll give you people. Look at that person right there. Look, look at that celebrity. Look at that athlete. Look at that person who is crashing before the world's eyes. I'm letting you see that to tell you, don't do that. Now, you know how hard of hearing we are? It's that we'll see that, watch them crash, even die, and we'll still do what they did. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And then lastly, number eight, is nature. My favorite passage for this is in Romans 1, where Paul says that all creation speaks and reveals God's ways and his attributes. In fact, Paul says he does it in such a way that it leaves all of us without excuse. In other words, we will never, this is an important theological point, do not for a moment think that you will stand before God someday and you'll be able to go, I didn't know. You never told me. I didn't realize that was on the test. It's their fault. Listen, hear me. You're here today to hear me tell you that you are without excuse. I'm sorry I burst your bubble. It's just like... Poof. He says all of creation speaks in this way. I, I tell you how that speaks to me today. It's when I see uh, unusual weather patterns. Listen, listen I, I, I don't buy into global warming, but I do buy into a global God who's trying to get some attention here. You know, that's how he got Israel's attention. Most of them were farmers in those days, and you send a famine, that'll get your attention. Won't it? I just won't send rain for several years. Let's see if you'll listen to me then. Of course, we, don't, we, don't, we are not an agrarian society anymore, and so... You know, the, the, the drying up of the crops doesn't bother us anymore because most of us eat chemicals. <laughs> but that's how God would get their attention. And so now when I see unusual weather patterns or natural disasters, uh, folks, I understand we're under a curse and I, I won't blame God for everything, but... but but God's hand protects and covers. And all God has to do is start removing his hand and this, this creation will groan. It's not God causing it. All God, God keeps it. And he says, you don't want me keeping it? You don't want my hands around it? I, 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 I'm happy to keep you, it says in the palm of my hand. He, he covers us and he says, if you really don't want me to be a part of your life anymore as I cover it, I won't make anything happen to you. I'll never, God will never cause you a problem. But all God has to do is say, if you don't want me, all right, do it yourself. And I have watched people, you know, pain, pain speaks. Well, I'll put it to you this way. Pain at certain levels speaks. How much pain does it take for him to speak to you? It's one of his ways. Now, I've come to this conclusion. Lord, I don't want pain. I want you to cover my life. I, I, would, I would prefer to get it through, through these other means of sowing into me. So I tell you what, help me. I want to be helped to hear your voice. I don't want to go into your will kicking and screaming. I want to run with delight into what you have for me. How about you? I want to hear his voice. Because if I get his voice, I'll have the divine advantage. Now, I'm going to end with this. I'm going to give you two opportunities this morning. And these are the two opportunities. Number one is this. You can't hear from God if you're not in a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. I mean, how can you talk to someone you're not in relationship with? I mean, you, if you're not in a relationship, you cannot 
You cannot hear from God. You cannot hear from someone you do not know. So the first prayer, and I, I mean, I'm just putting it out here, that I believe God hears is the one that reaches out to him and says, Lord, I'm wrong, I have sinned, and I need saving. I need help. I need your intervention. I need the cross of Christ to come and to redeem my life. And I don't know you. And I believe when he hears that, his arms open up and he says, my son, my daughter, come on. So that's the first thing you have to do. If you don't have a relationship or if you're in rebellion in that relationship, and we won't even get into all the nuances there, but truthfully, when you're in rebellion, sin clogs up the hearing channels. So, so first to hear God right, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta present a life that desires to be right. Secondly, secondly, nobody starts out as an expert in hearing. In fact, there are seasons of quietness from the Lord, and, and I have found seasons of quietness where He's just not speaking, and the reason He's not speaking is because He already said enough to me that I gotta get on with. But I do believe, having said that, that there is an anointing and Jesus said that he came in the acceptable and favorable year of the Lord that he came in order to restore sight to the blind and to open the ears that are deaf and I believe that's both physically and spiritually and I believe in this season there's an anointing that's bringing us into the favorable year of the Lord and and it could well be in your life it is time that deaf ears were unstopped and I believe there's an anointing to unstop your ears to where you can begin to hear him better if you want but lord i pray right now that lord in this in this world of confusing voices this world of confusing voices that lord you would open our ears to hear clearly the voice of the lord there are people here that just have a heart and a desire they would even say i don't know that i've ever really heard the voice of the lord speak to me it's time that you heard god speak that you heard his voice listen it may just be one word and that's all right one word is all it took for peter to walk on water that's all it took was simply come one word can change everything holy spirit usher in an anointing right now usher in an anointing right now to hear the voice of god the god of glory is thundering the God of glory really wants to thunder in our life. Come on, right now, let's begin to cry out as a congregation and just begin to say, Lord, speak to me. Talk to me. Help me to hear. Let it begin today. Lord, as I journey these weeks, this pastor trains us. Help it start today that I can begin to hear the voice of God. God.